My name is Margaret Beasley. I'm the 39th Governor of New South Wales, having been appointed on the 2nd of May 2019. So I'm just about up to my second full year as Governor. In regards to the changes which have happened uh, for women at work, uh, certainly since the time that you know I commenced, which was an extraordinarily long time ago, it really has been the change in parental leave, which I think has made a significant difference. And even within parental leave, and I've used that word advisedly because that's what it is these days, it very much went from no uh, leave at all when um, someone had a, had a, a baby to maternity leave and now uh, much more extensively to parental leave. That's very significant, I think, uh, for women uh, today in the workforce and for women being able to uh, develop their career. Because it means, first of all, it's a decision between a couple as to how that leave is shared. Um, it may be taken entirely by one parent as opposed to the other, it may be shared. So I really think that is a really um, enabling uh, facilitating provision uh, which will really assist women. Extraordinary advances have been made of course of the role of, of women. Uh, I came entirely from the law as my background and it was extraordinarily difficult for women at the time when I was law school. In those days legal firms were still taking on the one token woman only. That has just changed and partnerships, associateships, partnerships are significantly more readily available. There's still a lot of work to be done, I think, in any area, but there is one area which I think I really should emphasise, and that is STEM. I know that uh, there's a lot of discussion around STEM, but it was put to me by a senior educator recently, unless women are encouraged and facilitated and made excited about STEM, women will be the um, underpaid next generation of workers, professional workers, semi-professional workers, the entire workforce. And I thought that was a very compelling statement. Unless uh, women really do uh, significantly take part in STEM, it doesn't mean they have to leave behind their history, their reading, their English and their philosophy, uh, which are great mind-expanding aspects of education. But I think STEM is the area where women really have to uh, ensure that they're absolutely front, centre and pushing from behind. Everybody needs well-being, we know that. And look, I've, I've uh, done sort of two things now for quite a long time. I, I do yoga uh, a few times a week. And that really, uh, that, that's an overall well-being. But as it turns out, the entire practice is a, it works on the, uh, I've been told, the parasympathetic uh, nervous system. And you come out of a session of yoga, if you don't feel wonderful, uh, you haven't done your yoga class properly. And I also like to walk. You know, if you just walk, walk to work, go for a walk at lunchtime, uh, perhaps walk home from work, whatever's necessary. It's, it's a time when the thoughts um, you are, are allowed to settle in your mind. If I had a very difficult judgment that I was working on, if I left the judgment, walked away from it and actually did some walking quite often, the answer would just fall as I was walking. Likewise, if there was a, you know, a personnel problem that you had to deal with, likewise, I found that it was a very good way of allowing all the thoughts and ways that you might deal with this problem uh, to sort through and sift through your mind. And uh, more often than not, you'd get to the end, you'd reach your destination, wherever that might be, and you'd have a much better feel for what, was it, uh, what decision it was that you needed to make. You know, true leadership is very much a reflection of one's individual personality. So there can't be one leadership style, uh, there can't be one leadership manual, and there can't be one leadership right way. However, I do think that as a leader, it's extraordinarily important to listen. To listen uh, not only those to those who talk about leadership, but to listen to those whom you are to lead. Uh, listen to all the stories through all the levels of your organisation, because if you don't listen, obviously you're not going to hear, and it's important to hear uh, not only what is good, about the organisation so that you can build on it, but to also hear 
what's not quite working in the organisation so that you can tweak it, twist it, remould it or completely restructure it if you need to.